Hi there, my name is Justin. I created the SDK manager for MGear, which is now part of RigBits in the latest release. And I'm just going to take a little bit of time to walk you through the basics of the tool and some of the history behind it. Off the bat, um, I, I learned the the method from Judd Samantov with uh, his way of working with Citron keys and creating facial rigs using that. Um, it's a very joint based approach with a little bit of blend shape thrown in here and there. Um, and, and this tool is primarily constructed to aid in, in that workflow. I know he used um, a, a similar solution on The Last of Us for game characters. Uh, obviously he made a custom API node to hold all of the poses, but the concept of driving joints with setter and keys is roughly the same. Uh, I've based most of the UI of the tool and the way you interact with it off of a AB Facebook tools by Super Crumbly. Um, he seems to have disappeared from the industry, so uh, this is intended as a a good nod to him and the work that he did and hopefully carry on the, the legacy of that tool. Cool, so we have a fresh Maya scene over here and inside Shifter you'll see there is a new control called the SDK control. Um, pretty much the same as control O1 um, but this is specifically used for the uh, SDK manager. So if I bolt this quickly, you'll see uh, that we have a, a little setup here. Um, it's a standard control, but suffixed with SDK, and then a normal control and a joint in the very center of that. And the essentially the basic principle is that you'll have a driver control and then you will set your own key onto this control. And then um, if an animator wants to tweak anything, uh, they'll have access to this guy over here, but we'll get a little bit more into that later. Uh, so over here I have a guide set up. Um, these are all of the SDK controls. Uh, I've got one master and then six sitting under that. And then over here I have a standard control with three underneath that. Nothing fancy. And if I build that quickly. And over here we have some brow geometry. I'm just going to bind that up quickly. Cool. Um, so, close that. <laughs> the, the tool itself can be found under the MGear menu, RigBits, and SDK Manager. I would like to very much stress that this is a beta tool and very much a work in progress. So please excuse any bugs or quirks that you find. Uh, I would very much appreciate if you make a ticket about them uh, on the MGear forums or on the repositories themselves. Cool. Uh, the tool docks very much like all of the other tools in MGear. And to begin, we need to define a driver. So in this case, I'm going to use this guy as the driver. Then you need to define a driving axis or attribute, I'm going to use the translate Y. Then I need to load in all of the driven objects. Uh, since they're all interconnected and part of the same component, you can select any part of them. So in this case, I'm going to select the joint, the SDK control, the anim control, a whole bunch of things. And then when I go to add that in, it will only add in the SDK controls, and if you've given it a joint or the animation control of <coughs> one of these components, it will go and find the corresponding SDK control. Cool. Once all of that's set up, you create a pose. So I'm going to move that guy up. Over here, we have a really handy right-click menu. You can use this to select all of the SDK controls and then move them into a position. 
Uh, you can also use this to select the animation controls or the joints. Uh, but there's another cool nifty thing in this menu called apply control offset to selected. So it will take the driver controls current value and apply that offset to all of your driven objects. Then let's do a little bit of tweaking. Uh, I can do a little bit of rotation. Cool. Then I will set a driven key and notice that we didn't have to set a zero key. The tool worked out that we were missing one and set it for us. Back to the right click menu, there's a couple of cool extra utilities. So you can use that to select the SDK nodes as well. Uh, in case you have to do any debugging, you can also do it in a little bit more of a granular fashion. So you can select only the translate X controls, translate Y, so on and so forth. Uh, in future, I'm going to expand this to have uh, scale as well. Cool. Uh, in case you, you do something like this and you're not very happy with it, you can also delete the keys at a current value and reset it or you can delete all the keys associated to something. Cool, uh, so let's go set another pose quick. I do up and down. So now we've got up and down and I'm gonna add an extra key in over here where these guys move up. Cool. So if we go through the range, uh, these buttons down here will allow you to step through it. So this will be your zero key. That will be the next key and the key after. And you can kind of step through it like that, or you can use these side arrows to go to the first and last keys in the entire sequence. This little slider over here is still a little bit buggy at the moment, but it'll allow you to slide the range. Um, I wouldn't rely on this when you're setting up new keyframes, just in case it's a, a decimal point off um, that would create duplicate keys and probably mess up your system. So for the time being, um, stick to using these guys to step through keys in case you want to edit something. So if I'm on this key and I want these guys to slide out, then I, I can be 100% certain that I've edited the right key at the right place. Cool. Um, then uh, stepping down to here, these are actually save slots. So for example, if I want to save a pose, uh, let's say this one, I can select the SDK controls and hit that button over there, zero this out. If I hit the button again, it will apply that pose information onto these. Um, now that I've got it in a pose, I can also walk you through the reset menu. Uh, so I can reset all of the SDK controls, all of the anim tweaks or everything. So I'm just gonna reset that and I can reset it. Uh, if I want to clear this pose out, I think you hold control. Yeah, uh, if you hold control, it'll just clear out that slot and you can use it again for something else. It's very handy when you're iterating over a couple of poses. Uh, what else haven't we touched on here? Oh yes, so these checkboxes, if you don't want to key all of the rotate channels on the boxes over here, all you have to do is tick it off and then it won't key rotate. Uh, if you're not rotating a controller, you don't need that. That can help lighten up your rig. Uh, this checkbox over here will filter the drop down menu so that it will only display items that have keys attached to them. It can be very handy when you've got something with a lot of extra attributes on it. Cool. Um, I'll get to the controls on that just now. Uh, for now, the, the mirroring is, is very limited, um, so these aren't actually active yet, but we'll get there. Uh, for now, it's a very basic select the control or the driver control that you want to mirror, hit the button, and then 
it should mirror over all of your poses. Yeah, for now mirroring is is incredibly limited, but I'm looking to expand into this as soon as I possibly can. Cool. Uh, going into some of the file menus, so we can import and export all of our SDKs. So I want to go export. Let's drop that in the data folder. And save. And remove my rig. Rebuild. File import. And that should rebuild all of my SDKs exactly as they were. Uh, so this fits directly into MGIS data centric way of doing things where you can take all of your data out, out of Maya and get it back in. Cool. Uh, let's go through what else we got here. Uh, so this is just a utility for selecting things. So you can select all of the SDK boxes, all of the anim controls. Selecting these guys at the moment. Uh, yeah, so these are the animation tweak controls. And then uh, you can select all of the joints as well. And then all of the SDK nodes. Under the tools menu, there's quite a lot going on here. Uh, you can toggle infinity uh, on the, the key itself. So if we go to the graph editor, just dock that down there. Uh, loop this guy up as the driver. And I select the SDK controls. You can see there is currently no infinity set. Uh, let's select those guys again. And we can set pre-infinity and post-infinity. And there you go. Easy as that. Uh, I'm just going to turn that off. <laughs> oh wait, sorry. Uh, you do need to have the SDK controls selected when you hit that button uh, based off of your selection. Uh, you can also set the tangent type both in and out. I prefer linear for when I'm working, but uh, if you find the need, you can always change that up. The auto set limits and remove limits, this is a work in progress. Um, by the time it's done, uh, it will be able to get your highest key and your lowest key and then set limits on this control um, in case you want to limit off all of the, the range of motion on this control. Uh, rescale driver to fit driven, that's also a work in progress. Um, <laughs> The lock animation and lock SDK controls, this guy's very important. Um, so if I say lock animation controls, all of the animation tweaks are going to have their transforms locked. There we go. Cool. Uh, so that's going to lock those off so you don't accidentally bump them out of place uh, while you're working, because that can be very, very bad. Um, so I would recommend while you're busy rigging, uh, you just lock them all off. And then before you hand it off to an animator, then you just unlock them. Uh, and then vice versa. So the SDK controls, while you're working, keep them unlocked. And then when you hand them off to the animation team, just lock them away. Probably hide the shape nodes as well, just so no one can mess with those and potentially break the rig. Uh, prune SDKs with no input or output. Uh, I had a problem sometimes where I would get a uh, animation curve node that had no input or output, um, only one of them, and that would clutter up the scene. So this will just go in and delete anything that it finds. Ooh, uh, let me remove the graph editor, get some space up in here. Cool, that's everything on the tools menu. Uh, reset menu we've touched on. Uh, this is just to reset your controls. The help will take you to an about page. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the controls menu, uh, also very simple. Um, you can set the upper limits for control. And that's all this. Uh, and then you can set your lower limits. 
get that and that will unlock your limits. Cool, I uh, just wanted to show a rig that I've been working on with um, with the tool and been developing both the, the rig and the, the tool hand in hand. Uh, it's Darius from League of Legends. So I've done a, a quick mock-up of his browse using the uh, SDK control and this is all joint weighting over here. Uh, I've uh, also done the eye setup just using those controls. So you could use this to make some pretty cool squishy eyes or really art direct the kind of poses that you want um, throughout the, the arc of a blink. Yeah, and that's, that's it. <laughs> cool, thanks, thanks for watching.